Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And it's 1 a.m. right now, or a little bit past 1 a.m. And we're going to crank out another Velocity Banking video called Velocity Banking 1 a.m. Boot Camp. And we'll just do a quick review. So if you have no idea what Velocity Banking 101 is, or banking is, I suggest you click the Velocity Banking 101 video down below if you want a more simplified, basic explanation of the concept. And then you can come back here or you can just keep watching this video, whatever you wish to do. Uh, but we're going to review uh, Velocity Banking. And there's only really two steps to it. The first step is you have to create a budget, which I've kind of semi done here, right? And then the second step is you have to select your operating account, which will be a line of credit. So your average American, and that's a derogatory term, kind of like the standard American diet, which stands for SAD, right? So the average American uses their checking account as their main operating account. While we're well, with Velocity Banking, we're going to use our line of credit as our main operating account. So here we have our paycheck, uh, $6,000. Expenses, I've created a formula from B8 to B11, lines B8 to B11. And we're just going to go ahead and fill that in. And uh, this will auto-calculate the checking and savings after each month. And so let's go ahead and fill it in. So 400 in student loans, 600 in auto loans, and 1,200 in a mortgage, and then we'll say 1,500 in other expenses. So this person's actually doing pretty decent, $6,000 a month. That's more like $100,000 a year pay, uh, salary uh, after taxes. So I'm pretty sure within uh, a quickly, we can easily get rid of these loans, right? or debts and pay them off quickly. So what we need to do is after we've done our budget, we're going to have to select our operating account, which will be a line of credit. What is a line of credit? All it is is a financial tool where you could borrow money, pay it back, and then reuse it over and over again. So if you have a credit card, which most of the population does, then you already have a line of credit, although there are some restrictions of what you can do with that line, with the credit card. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're a homeowner. Let's say, we did the smart thing and bought real estate at a discount because that's the easiest way to create wealth, right? And we have something called equity. So what's equity? It's the home estimated home value minus any loans, right? So let's say we bought a $300,000 property and we got a $200,000 loan. What's our equity? It's $100,000, right? And banks are willing to lend you 80% of the equity in general, not always for sure. You have to get approved, but they're willing to lend you 80% of your equity in the form of something called a home equity line of credit, which you can kind of think of as a credit card, a credit card based on the equity of your house. So anytime you provide any security or collateral, which is in this case will be your home equity, uh, you get lower rates. So in most lines of credits, it could be from 15 to 30% if it's unsecured, but because it's secured, if you're not, if you don't have like a 0.99% introductory interest period, then they'll give you usually 10%. It might be variable, but it's not going to vary too much off of 10% in my experience. Okay, so now what we're going to do is find a way to kind of consolidate our debts and free up some cash flow. But if we're to have $2,300 in checking savings every month, we're pretty good, right? Because the average American can't even come up with $400 in savings. So we're going to make a pretty good situation even better. So as a Velocity Banker, uh, we have still have the same paycheck. And then let's see what we can do with our expenses, right? So now what we can do is maybe we can just do a $23,000 transfer, transfer this debt. And actually what you would do is you go to the bank's website, click a button that says, okay, Mr. or Mrs. Bank, and that's not how they actually speak in real life. Please transfer $23,000 with the click of website or button to my checking and savings. And then you do that and then you pay off these two debts, right? So this will be zero, this will be zero, and then this will be zero, but the balance of this will be 23,000. And then we have our mortgage and our food and gas, right? So now let's just kind of uh, do this. And to get our cash flow, it is C2 minus C3, right? And the strategy is really simple. Say this every single time. You put your paycheck into your line of credit and then you take your expenses out, right? And so every single time you put your entire paycheck in, that's going to satisfy the minimum monthly payment. 
and then put the interest uh, at its lowest because the interest is calculated by the average daily balance. And then every month after, it, the amount is going to uh, decrease by your cash flow, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So G2 minus 3,300. And then let's see how long it takes for us to pay this sucker off. Okay. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, about seven months. Okay. So it's going to take us about seven months. And so to calculate the interest that we paid, we're going to estimate it. We don't, we're not going to uh, do a super accurate estimate because it's calculated by the average daily balance. And we don't know when the expenses are going to occur uh, because how do you calculate what day the expenses are going to occur in the future? You, that's possible. So what we're going to do is just kind of overestimate by taking the previous month's balance, multiply by the interest rate, which is 0.1, and divide by 12. So why divide by 12? Because the interest rate is quoted annually. And to get the monthly interest, you divide by 12. And let's see how much interest you pay. You pay about $764. And so, yeah, it's going to take about seven months to pay that off. Um, so let's just kind of um, do write down our results. So seven months payoff. And seven hundred sixty-four dollars. We'll just round it up. I like to round it up to the nearest five. Oh, where's the dollar sign? Uh, interest paid. Right, pretty good. So we basically we borrowed twenty-three thousand, right? Or we had twenty-three thousand left that we have to pay off, and then we just paid it off quickly under a year and seven hundred sixty-five dollars of interest. Now. Do you know anybody who can pay off $23,000 of loans in about seven months? Mm, really hard for most people, but really easy for us if we're doing velocity banking, right? Set it and forget it. That's, that's what I say. Okay, so now let's just do this. Let's erase this and figure out what's the next month loan or last loan we have to pay, which is the mortgage, right? So... One thing I always like to stress is how long does it take to go from 290 to 190K, right, on a mortgage? And you can actually take a look at this by using an am amortization schedule calculator. So if you go to bankrate.com and look for the mortgage amortization schedule calculator, and I'm just going to type 200,000, 30 years at 6%, and then the loan start date is going to be January. Okay, and then you take a look at the schedule here. How long does it take to pay off $10,000 of the loan? And you see that it's going to take us about four years, almost about four years, and we're going to have to pay about $45,000 in interest. Now, let's just do this. So let's pay off $10,000 here, right? $10,000 here, and then just kind of do the same thing. So if we do equals... Uh, G2, I'm sorry, G2 minus 3,300, right? And, well, if we just kind of pay off a little bit more, I think we should be fine. But, or we just do this. So this will be 9,900, right? Yeah. So let's just do 9,900. Just make the math a little bit easier. So this is zero, one, two, three. So it's going to take us about three months to pay off almost ten thousand dollars in in uh, using velocity banking. And then what we do is go ahead and calculate the interest, which is g g two times point one divided by twelve. Okay, and then let's go ahead and so in order to pay off almost about ten thousand dollars. We did it about three months, and then we paid one hundred sixty-five dollars. Whereas, if we look at the bank schedule and just follow this, it takes us four years, and we pay forty-five grand. Oh my goodness, I'm getting a heart attack. Not really, but figurative. So, okay, so now what we do is just rinse and repeat again. You know, take off another ten thousand or nine thousand nine hundred, whatever you want to do, to chunk. And then we're just repeat. Now, here's the cool thing, right? We have this cool velocity uh, banking calculator provided by Renatus. 
um, if you're a member of the group, you get access to this calculator because you would be uh, have access to the Renatus educational platform or system. And you just type in your numbers here to see how long it'll take. So we just put in 200,000. And by the time we pay this off, so this is going to be seven months, we just take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The balance is this, right? And then we go ahead and put this balance here. Okay, and the interest rate is 6%, and the payment amount is about 1200 It says 1199 I think 1200 is good enough. All right, so 1200 and then we'll just do a chunk amount, which is the amount that you transfer to the line of credit is 9900 All right, and let's see how long it takes us, and we got to put our monthly income, which is $6,000, and our living expenses which is only 1500 because the 1200 mortgage payment is accounted for here. So we just do 1500, right? And look how long it takes to pay the sucker off, 4.2 years. So if we got into the bank schedule, it would have taken us $224,000 or we would pay $224,000 of interest. And we only pay 27,000, right? Using the strategy. And again, do we have to make more money? No, we did not. All we did is transfer some debt, free up some cash flow, and then pay off our last biggest debt by transferring little chunks of debt, and we can still maintain our liquidity. Again, it's a set and forget it system. You just put your paycheck in one place and then have your cash flow pay it down, right? So instead of directly overpaying the loan where you lose your liquidity, although you know overpaying your loan directly is obviously going to save you money, you can still control your money and overpay at the same time, okay? Well, hopefully that made sense. Uh, I don't think we took too much of our time today. Uh, and again, as we keep practicing at these odd hours of day, I'm pretty sure that that'll mean that we've mastered the subject. I hope it does. Also, um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and now make a plug for the group. If you're interested in joining our group, go ahead and click the Google form link below and we get a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call if you're interested. And if not, no worries, all right. Have a great day and we will speak next time.